treatment failure and relapse in acute myeloid leukemia. Treatment failure occurs when your AML treatment does not succeed in eliminating all the leukemia from your bone marrow after initial therapy, also known as induction chemotherapy. It could also mean that the leukemia recurred or relapsed after being well controlled after chemotherapy and entering a state known as remission. Complete remission occurs when myeloblasts, or leukemic cells, represent less than 5% of the cells in your bone marrow when examined under a microscope. It also means that your blood counts have met certain parameters that are near normal. Unfortunately, relapse is common in AML. About half of people who go into remission will have a relapse of their leukemia. Once AML relapses, it is much more difficult to control. Only about one-third of people have another remission with treatment. Treatment failure in the form of primary resistance to chemotherapy, where chemotherapy does not eliminate the leukemia after induction, is less common in people under 60. Only about 35% do not achieve remission in this age group. This means three or four of every 10 younger patients will experience treatment failure. In people over 60, treatment failure may be close to 50%. This may happen because the AML is more resistant to treatment than in younger people, the type of leukemia is different, or older adults have other diseases besides AML, such as myelodysplastic syndromes, heart disease, or diabetes. The risk of treatment failure is higher in people with more aggressive subtypes of AML. More importantly, certain cytogenetic abnormalities may predict a worse outcome as patients may have a more chemo-resistant disease. The presence of myelodysplasia-like changes may also indicate a higher risk of treatment failure. Bone marrow may not adequately recover from treatment, increasing the risk of serious infections or bleeding problems. Based on the genetics of your AML, doctors will classify your likely treatment outcome as favorable intermediate or adverse, or good, medium, or poor. Along with your age and other factors, such as your general health, your risk group helps determine your treatment plan. Doctors consider AML cured after you are in remission for five years. If AML comes back during this five-year period, it has relapsed. The time between complete remission and a relapse is important. A relapse within six months indicates that the AML is more aggressive and less likely to be cured. A relapse occurring after about 18 months of complete remission is more likely to respond to treatment. After entering remission, your doctor may recommend maintenance therapy. The goal is to help prevent or reduce risk of relapse. Certain cytogenetic and molecular abnormalities increase the risk of treatment failure. The cytogenetic abnormalities include involvement of chromosomes 5, 7, 17, and 3 when certain translocations are present and when three or more chromosomes are involved. Molecular mutations related to poor outcomes include TP53, FLT3ITD, RUNX1, and ASXL1. However, their effect depends on several factors it is not unusual to find several mutations occurring at once. Some mutations may indicate your AML is more likely to be treated successfully, especially those called NPM1 mutations. However, success depends on what other mutations are present. CEBP-alpha is another mutation that tends to be associated with a good outcome. Certain cytogenetic abnormalities also have good outcomes, including translocation 821, translocation 1517, and inversion 16. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has approved several drugs that can be used to treat AML that does not go into remission or comes back after treatment. A drug called azacitidine, taken as a pill for maintenance therapy, can help people survive longer in remission after intensive chemotherapy. This drug can prevent or delay relapse and help prolong survival even after AML has relapsed. Other FDA-approved drugs for relapsed AML are enacidinib, ivocidinib, mitostorin, and gilteritinib. These drugs work when specific gene mutations are present, including IDH2, IDH1, 
and FLT3 mutations. Another agent, gemtuzumab ozogamycin, is an antibody that attaches to a specific surface marker known as CD33 that is often present on AML cells. Then it delivers a chemotherapy drug into the cell. Venetoclax is approved for newly diagnosed AML in combination with azacitidine, decitabine, or low-dose cytarabine in adults 75 years or older or with comorbidities that limit the use of intensive induction chemotherapy. A stem cell transplant should always be considered when AML is diagnosed. It may be the best option for curing AML. The best time is after remission and one or two rounds of consolidation therapy. A stem cell transplant should also be considered when AML relapses, particularly if remission is achieved again. A stem cell transplant when AML is not in remission is unlikely to be successful. Most transplant centers will require that you are back in remission or have very limited amounts of AML for a successful transplant. Whenever possible, it is important to join a clinical trial for a new AML treatment. The knowledge gained helps to advance treatment for persons with AML. It is important to discuss all your treatment options with your doctor or cancer care team.